At the start of the series, we see our female lead, Xu Jingjing, finally deciding to confess her love for her childhood crush, Gao Zhang, who is a current basketball star at school. The feisty and slightly tomboyish Jing approaches Gao Zhang, but unfortunately, she gets hit on the head by a basketball. It turns out it was all but a dream. Jing's mom wakes her up from a deep slumber, nagging our heroine to get ready for school as it is already getting late. Jing hurriedly gets ready, eats breakfast, and heads to school. On the way, she comes across a chubby boy named Kong who is busy eating rolls in a street stall. Jing, who didn't eat a proper breakfast as she was running late, cannot resist the delicious rolls, so she asks Kong if she can join him. The humble Kong shares his food with her, and when they are finished eating, they get ready to go about their ways. Just then, they trip over an advertisement board. To make matters worse, they realize that their bottoms are stuck to the board as it was freshly glued. Jing hides away in embarrassment when she sees her crush Gao Zhang heading towards them. Gao Zhang then recommends that the two get a new pair of pants from their school's dormitory. Next, Jing and Kong arrive at the school's dormitory to ask the teacher for a new pair of pants. Jing gets her size, but unfortunately the teacher informs Kong that they do not have one in his size. Just then, Jing's rival from childhood, who is also a popular cheerleader at school, Shu, arrives at the office. She tells Kong that she can help him get another pair of pants. In the next scene, Kong thanks Shu for helping him out. It is evident that he is already swayed by her beauty. Later in the classroom, as Jing is telling her friends about the recent incident, the teacher walks in and introduces the new transfer student, who is none other than Kong. It turns out that he is excellent at studies. Since he doesn't know anyone yet, Kong becomes deskmates with Jing. Later during the break, Kong sits alone in the cafeteria eating his lunch. Shu approaches him and suggests he join the basketball team in order to be more fit and healthy. At the same time, Kong notices a bracelet in her hand. Later, he goes through a profile on his computer and sees the same bracelet. He jumps in excitement after realizing that he finally met the girl behind the bracelet. The next day at school, Kong manages to get on the school's basketball team when he showcases his skills in front of Gao Zhan, who happens to be the captain of the team. During one match, Jing gives Gao Zhan his favorite drink from her mother's tea shop, red bean matcha. But the matcha powder turns out to be fiber powder, so he ends up with diarrhea in the middle of the basketball game. Left with no choice, he makes Kong play his position. As the clock ticks down to the final seconds of the game, Kong takes a jump shot. His buzzer shot will determine whether they win or lose the game. Sadly, the opponent defends well and blocks the shot. As a result, Kong and the team lose the match. What's more dramatic is he accidentally lands on Jing, who had come to the court to cheer for the team. The two then fall on the floor, lying side by side. When returning home that day, Jing realizes that she lost a love letter which she had written for Gao Zhang. Worried, she sits with her friends and prays, hoping nobody will find it. Sadly, the letter somehow lands on Kong's desk the next day. When he opens it, the other kids in the class join him and start reading the letter aloud. At the same time, Jing enters the classroom and embarrassingly attempts to snatch away the letter. While this is going on, the teacher, Miss Chen, arrives at the scene and takes the letter. That evening, she has a private chat with Jing. Surprisingly, rather than admit that she wrote the letter for Gao Zhan, Jing says that it was meant for Kong. In an effort to discipline her, the teacher has her heroine read the letter out loud to the class. Thankfully, Kong steps up for her, and surprisingly, Gao Zhan also tells the teacher that they shouldn't get involved in Jing's personal life. The rest of the students agree, and Jing is told to return to her seat. Next, Kong and Gao Zhan decide to help Jing to retrieve the letter from the teacher's desk. While they are doing so, Jing tries to distract their math teacher, Mr. Zhang, who is very strict when it comes to discipline. Thankfully, the two boys are able to retrieve the letter, which also has a fingerprint on it. Kong informs Jing that the fingerprint might be the only way to tell who put the letter in his book earlier that day. Although they manage to get the letter, Jing is called by the teacher Zhang and told to resign from Taekwondo class so that she can focus on her studies more. One thing that our girl is good at is Taekwondo. She proudly flaunts her black belt as she doesn't want to resign from the class. Left with no choice, she once again seeks the help from Gao Zhan, who turns out to be the president of the Taekwondo club. In an effort to keep continuing in the class, she challenges Gao Zhan to a duel and mentions that whoever wins will be able to determine her fate. Meanwhile, we learn that Kong's been chatting with someone online who has the alias, Why Am I Worthless? Initially, he thought it was Shu because that person had posted a specific bracelet. But now, he has discovered that Jing also wears the same one on her ankle, which he saw during her Taekwondo club. So, he is kind of confused and unsure about who the mysterious girl really is. Meanwhile, we learn that Gao Zhan has been walking Shu home because he has noted someone taking pictures of her around the school. She's also been sneaking around in parking lots to practice her street dance routine. It turns out that her mother doesn't approve of this style of dancing. One day while practicing at the parking lot, the same creepy guy takes some pictures of Shu. At the same time, Kong spots a guy and tries to catch him. 
However, he ends up getting punched hard by the guy, which results in him having breathing difficulties. Seeing this, a panicked Shu calls Gao Zhan for help. The latter arrives in no time and opens Kong's jacket to reveal a muscle suit, which he had worn to impress Shu. As a result of this incident, Gao Zhan calls off his big match with Jing, leaving her enraged. In the next scene, Jing and Kong end up commiserating together in a cafe after their humiliating day. Jing is annoyed that Gao Zhang hasn't apologized for standing her up, even though she knows why. We learn that Jing resents Shu for bringing her unnecessary pressure since their childhood days, as she has excelled at everything. And she also resents Shu for having Gao Zhang's attention now. Later, they learn that it was Shu who had put the letter in Kong's book so that Gao Zhang would misunderstand Jing's love for him. After all, Shu has a big crush on him. Although she apologizes to Jing the following day, our heroine doesn't forgive her. Next, Jing and Kong make a pact. Our cutesy heroine will help our chubby Kong lose weight by training him, and he will help her improve her grades. Although they have a hard time in the beginning, they do their best to work towards their goals. In the meantime, the pervert has posted Shu's photos online. When Kong and Jing learn about this, they decide to help Shu. The kids along with Gao Zhang and other friends, Shang and Da Peng, come up with a plan to lure the pervert into their trap. In their plan, Jing will pose as the pervert's bait, dressing up in a revealing skirt as she texts him to meet in the park. When Jing shows up all dressed, Kong and Gao Zhang cannot stop staring at her. Our girl looks very pretty, completely contrasting her tomboyish looks. Next, the pervert and his gang arrive at the park to meet Jing. As soon as they show up, Kong and the other kids come out of their hiding place and confront the perverts. However, the perverts start running away in opposite directions. After a long chase and fighting in the streets and alleys, our heroes manage to catch the bad guys. However, Kong takes a blow to his head from one of the perverts. Luckily, Shu is smart enough to call the cops on time. At the police station, it turns out that Gao Zhan's late father was a police officer, and the captain recognizes Gao Zhan. The officer then tells the kids that they shouldn't have taken matters into their own hands. The following day, Jing's hard work pays off when she gets a 90 on her math test, but her other subjects still need improvement. She's frustrated by this, and Kong tells her that they'll tackle the subjects one at a time. The two then end up placing a bet. If Jing copies anyone's homework next semester and doesn't improve her skills, she'll have to be Kong's domesticated elf. This means that Jing will have to do everything he says, and if Kong doesn't lose his weight, he will have to obey Jing. Once the break starts, Jing creates a winter holiday study schedule. She then studies with her two friends, Jia Yao and Xiao Bai. When they return to school, there's a new guy catching the attention of all the girls. However, he only seems interested in watching Jing copy her homework again, meaning she couldn't live up to the bet. To everyone's shock, it's a slim Kong who has lost a dramatic amount of weight and is now a completely different person with lots of admirers. Jing slaps herself as she can't believe it. She then runs away in disbelief and anger because she lost the bet. The next day, Gao Zhan and Jing finally have their duel match. While most students are placing bets on Gao Zhan, Kong places his bets on Jing. In the next scene, Jing musters her courage and prepares to duel with her crush Gao Zhan. Although at the beginning it seems like he is winning, Jing eventually remembers Kong's words of encouragement and strikes back at her opponent with skillful moves. Consequently, she wins the match and gets to continue her Taekwondo class. Meanwhile, sports day is coming up and Kong signs up to host the event as she was also signing up to be one of the hosts. He hopes he will be partnered with her. In order to sign up though, he has to click some portraits, so Jing helps him out. The next scene shows Kong's photo shoot, with falling petals, the wind-blown shots by the window, and then the umbrella one. While editing the photos later that night, Jing notices how handsome Kong looks. She wonders how he ended up being so smart and handsome at the same time. The following day at school, the results for MCs for Sports Day is out, and luckily for Kong, he is partnered with Shu, his longtime crush. In the meantime, Jing wants to participate in a marathon, but only the male students are allowed. Therefore, she and her friends get signatures to petition for her participation. Their class teacher, Miss Chen, supports this idea, while the misogynistic math teacher, Mr. Zhang, adamantly objects. When Jing submits the petition to him, he scolds her. Seeing this, Kong supports his dear friend and decides to forfeit the coveted MC position in protest of equal treatment for the female athletes. However, right after he chides himself for giving it up for Jing when he had the perfect chance to be with Shu, and he doesn't understand why he did it for her. Our heroine is happy that he made the sacrifice for her though. Surprisingly, when he tells Shu the news, she isn't upset with him. 
She comments that he has a strong bond with Jing and she's impressed with him. He says it's not for her, but for all the girls at the school and makes sure Shu knows that there is nothing going on between him and Jing. Next, the boys in Jing's class need uniforms for sports day and Apong is begging his rich father to provide them for them as he has a huge garment factory. His father points out that he's paid for a lot of stuff and refuses to sponsor any more. That is until our star, Gao Zhan, shows up. Since Gao Zhan is the topper of the class and is liked by every parent, Da Peng's dad immediately agrees to sponsor the uniform. However, the uniforms turn out to be t-shirts with Jing's doodles, skirts, and matching socks. During the inauguration of the sports day, the boys march on the ground wearing the same uniforms and show support for Jing as they chant, I am a girl, I want to run. While teacher Zhang is making a fuss about it, the principal, Mr. Shen, just laughs and even takes photos of the boys. Afterward, teacher Zhang scolds them and gets even louder when Miss Chen supports her student. Thankfully, Principal Shen shows up and says there isn't a problem. Teacher Zhang insists that girls can't participate in the marathon, but the wise principal says that the solution is to add a women's group to the marathon five minutes after the boys run and split the timing. Consequently, Teacher Zhang is forced to agree to this compromise. During the marathon, though, Kong passes out because of low blood sugar. Understandably, Jing fusses over him for not taking care of himself. Meanwhile, the students from Jing's class are tied with their rival class. Now, the final point depends on Jing, who has to race in the marathon. During her race, Jing is obstructed by girls from the rival class. It appears as if she's going to lose, but just then, Kong shows up on his bike and gives her words of encouragement. With this, a revitalized Jing pushes away the rivals, but while doing so, she herself falls to the ground. Thankfully, with Kong's continued support, she gets up and continues running, even with a bleeding knee. After much determination and hard work, our heroine eventually wins the race but she's taken to the infirmary as she loses consciousness due to the recent injury. The next day, Kong and Jing learn that their crushes, Xu and Gao Zhan, are meeting privately. The jealous pair then watch them by a tree. It turns out that Xu was asking Gao Zhan to teach her cousin some lessons on Taekwondo as a way to spend time with him. After a while, Jing and Kong crash their meeting by joining them. The foursome then end up hanging out together and Jing tries her best to create moments between herself and Gao Zhan. When she asks him to open a bottle of water for her, she fantasizes about him smiling at her. However, in reality, he can't open it because the lid is glued shut. Both Jing and Kong's awkward attempts to be alone with their respective crushes fail. At one point, Jing manages to get raw shrimp paste all over her face, and while cleaning up her face, she mistakenly pulls down her wig, which she had worn to hide her identity while spying on Shu and Gao Zhan earlier. Filled with embarrassment, Jing runs off to the bathroom. Kong follows her to help her, but he is also hilariously repulsed by the wig. That night, Kong, who has been talking to someone online for a long time now, asks to finally meet up in person. He still thinks that person is Shu, but the following day, he goes on the date and sees Gao John waiting at the table. Kong then concludes that he has been talking to Gao John instead of Shu this whole time, so he starts avoiding him because he thought he was a girl and is quite embarrassed about the situation. One day, Gao John asks Jing why Kong's been avoiding him. Although she is well aware of the entire matter, she lies to him that she doesn't know. Jing then meets Kong, and they go to a restaurant to eat together. There, she notices Kong has not been eating, and after much interrogation, she finds out that he has an eating disorder. That's why he fainted on sports day. Jing then makes a deal with him. He helps her with raising her grades in English and Chinese, and she'll help him with his relationship with food. As a result, Jing does well on her midterm exams, but teacher Zhang suspects her of cheating. Our heroine then complains about teacher Zhang to her parents. Therefore, the following day at school, Jing's mother defends her. Our heroine then decides to retake the test so that teacher Zhang can stop saying she cheated. In the next scene, she retakes the exam and gets 102, which is eight points higher than the previous one. However, teacher Zhang, who's still not satisfied with the marks, says that she should have gotten 120. Later during their class, Kong abruptly stands up and asks teacher Zhang to apologize to Jing as he had accused her of cheating. The arrogant man refuses and tells them to take out their papers instead. However, Kong says that he didn't bring his and continues standing. Gao Zhan does the same thing, and pretty soon, the entire class follows suit. After this, teacher Zhang goes to whine to Principal Shen, who tells him to take some time off, as there have been complaints from the other teachers about him as well. That night, Kong is invited over to Jing's house for dinner as her parents want to thank him for tutoring their daughter. She warns him about how tacky and ugly her house is and that her mother's cooking sucks. After enjoying dinner together, Kong is shown around the house by Jing. She shows him some of her doodles and drawings and tells him that she wants to be a designer someday. This is when she finds out that Kong's father is a well-known interior designer, so she covers his eyes to prevent him from seeing her place further. 
she's embarrassed to show her tacky room. While Kong is trying to get her to stop it, the two tussle and eventually fall onto the bed with Jing on top of them. After a long moment, they awkwardly break apart. The awkwardness continues as he bumps into her once again until he finally flees from the room. In the meantime, Gao John finds out that his mother is dating Da Pong's father. This is also the reason why the father was being extra nice and so agreeable with Gao John about sponsoring the sports uniform that day. This revelation stuns the poor boy and he walks away angrily. Gao John doesn't even show up to school the next day. His mother is understandably worried about where he's gone and he's not answering his phone and hasn't come back home. In the next scene, Kong and Jing look for Gao John by using Jing's notebook about him. It turns out that she's written every detail about Gao John, such as what he likes and dislikes in that book, which she nicknamed Gao John Observation Book. She thinks he's at his favorite place, which is a now closed paintball place. Thankfully, they find him there and encourage him to go home and talk about it with his mother. He admits that he doesn't want a new father. He came to the paintball place because his father used to bring him there. As the three continue talking, Gao John says that he's not ready to move on or let his father go. Jing says that he won't and he will be with him for life. He doesn't know how to face his mother or accept Da Pong's father, so Jing suggests that he stay at Kong's until he decides. The only condition is that he has to return to school while he works through this. The following day, Jing goes with Gao John to see a matchmaker about finding a more suitable husband for his mother. Surprisingly, the matchmaker turns out to be Jing's father. Even she didn't know he was into this profession. Shortly after, Jing's father starts showing a list of suitable men for his mom. But the boy is impossible to please as there is something wrong with every candidate. Either he's too old, too bald, or too chubby. When nothing works, Jing's father suggests a lecture for his mother. He wants them to meet tomorrow or the day after. Afterward, Jing asks Gao John why he dislikes Da Peng's father so much. He says it's because he's so different from his father, Nouveau Riche with his gold chain and gold watch. In the meantime, she wants to participate in a dance competition, but since her mother doesn't allow it, she has to find a secret place to record her dance video. Thankfully, Kong asks his father and finds a relatively secluded place for Shu to shoot her video. They manage to record the video professionally and to celebrate it, have dinner together. During this time, they play the game of I have but you haven't with lemon slice where they have to confess something about themselves. Gao John reluctantly says that his mother is dating his classmate's father. When it's her turn, Jing says that she has a crush on someone in their class, hinting at Gao John, but he just looks clueless. He replies that he doesn't like anyone and eats a slice of lemon. Jing looks relieved, while Shu looks disappointed. Afterward, Shu asks Jing who she likes, but our girl tries to avoid answering her. Shu correctly guesses that it's Gao John. Jing continues avoiding the question and tries to walk away, but Shu mentions that she has already let go of him. Now, she is hoping Jing can get with him. The next day at school, one of Jing's friends has a slip of the tongue and tells Da Pong that Gao John has made inquiries about a matchmaker for his mother. Furious, Da Pong goes to see Gao John and begins fighting with him. Their scuffle is eventually ended when the teachers intervene and force them to hold hands. Later, Gao John angrily confronts Jing about why she disclosed his personal information. Our heroine has no clue about it and later learns that her friend had mistakenly blacked. That evening, Kong hosts a party at his house since it's his birthday. To surprise him, Jing goes to the mall and looks for a particular bag that he has always wanted. But unfortunately, she learns that it's all sold out. With no options left, Jing ends up buying a white backpack and then paints a rainbow on the bag, like the one he wanted. Meanwhile, Kong's father talks on the phone with his ex-wife and learns that she is soon getting remarried. Kong overhears the conversation but wants to appear cool and act like he doesn't care. Later at the party, Gao John makes sure to let it be known that he is still mad at Jing by ignoring her the entire evening. When she gets ready to give her gift to Kong, Xu gives him the same backpack, only hers is the original limited edition one. Embarrassed, Jing tries to leave with the one she painted herself and keeps it out of sight. However, Kong follows her out, lifts the bag from her hands, and sees what it is. She's embarrassed as it might as well be a knockoff, but he smiles and says that her gift is a worldwide limited edition, customized and handmade, only for him. Jing doesn't quite look convinced, so he cutely whines and begs her to let him keep it. She finally laughs and says that she'll reluctantly part with it. The birthday party is a bit awkward, as Da Pong is still upset with Gao Zhang, who is upset with Jing. Later, when Jing goes to get the strawberry birthday cake, she ends up tripping over a rug and dropping it. This reminds Kong of a past strawberry cake from his ninth birthday, so he runs away. After this, everyone is looking for him, and Jing finds him eating bags of junk food. He admits that after he turned nine, he never had a birthday again, as that's when his parents got divorced. His mother said that her life and career had been held back by her husband and son. After his parents got divorced, his dad always made food for him, as if trying to ease the guilt with food. Kong was never full or hungry, but just kept trying to fill a void. 
He then discovered mayonnaise and kept eating it to calm himself down. He admits that his mother is getting remarried to a man who has two kids. He tearfully says that she's willing to cook for them, but not him. In response, Jing says that they need to show her that they can live happily without her. The next day, Teacher Shen announces that the students will be taken on a farming trip. In the next scene, the kids are getting ready for their trip. They arrive at a remote village, and Teacher Shen reminds them of the rules of the trip. Later at the bonfire, they play a game, and Kong gets every single prompt. But it's good because it involves him getting hugs and compliments from his friends and various peers. And it ends with a birthday cake, a steamed cake decorated with colorful vegetables for him, which makes him tear up. After this, Kong has to make a wish and blow out the imaginary candles, which are basically red chili peppers. Kong correctly guesses that his surprise was definitely engineered by Jing, as she had gotten her friends and other students to help. He later thanks her for rewriting his painful memory into his happiest one. In response, Jing tells him that even if his mother doesn't like him, it doesn't mean the whole world doesn't like him. She hopes that he won't use food to fill the hole in his heart anymore. In the meantime, Da Pong approaches Gao Zhan and shows him some texts. The texts are from Da Pong's father to Gao Zhan's mother, in which he describes how he's going to change himself and be worthy of her and her son's love. We learn that Da Pong lost his mother when he was young, and his father did everything he could to give him a better life. To Da Pong, he's the best father in the world, and he'll support his father as he's found love. He then tearfully hands Gao Zhan some papers, a property transfer agreement and an equity transfer agreement, which his father had signed for Gao Zhan's mom. Later, Kong talks to Gao Zhan about his anger with Jing. Although Gao Zhan knows that she didn't do anything wrong, he's now angrier that he went to the matchmaking agency because he knows that he did something wrong. The group then climbs up a hill to watch the sunrise, and Jing finds a way to spend time alone with Gao Zhan. Meanwhile, as Kong and Xu chat with each other, they realize they've been talking to each other online. This means that Kong had guessed right. The person he was talking to online is none other than his big crush, Xu. But he is still unsure as to why he'd seen Gao Zhan that day at the coffee shop when she had asked to meet up. Xu tells him that she happened to run into Gao Zhan, and Kong must have arrived at the shop when she was in the restroom. Later, as they enjoy the beautiful sunrise, Gao Zhan takes a photo with Jing, while Kong takes one with Xu. Our heroine takes this opportunity for Gao Zhan and Da Pong to make up with each other. When Gao Zhang offers his hand, Da Pong realizes he's come around, so he exuberantly hugs him and calls him a friend. Meanwhile, Kong is confused about Shu being give up virtuoso, which is her online handle, because she doesn't seem to understand many of the memes or any other references he makes. That night, Jing sadly learns that the eggs that she's been trying to incubate on the farm are somehow destroyed. Suddenly, it starts to rain, but Jing is so busy mourning that she doesn't realize she's been completely drenched. When they return from the trip, Shu makes an exciting announcement to her friends that her dance video has now gotten first place in the competition. She's decided to quit cheerleading, but Kong convinces her to continue so she can perform with the group for the upcoming cultural and art festival. In the meantime, Jing is admitted to the hospital as she has pneumonia from getting wet in the rain the other night. To her surprise, Gao Zhan visits her with some meals and his homework. Jing is beyond elated to see him. Back at school, Kong helps Shu with her cheerleading performance for the upcoming festival, so she offers to treat him to a meal afterwards. He agrees and suggests the same coffee shop. Later, when they reach there, Kong notices that the shop only sells coffee, but he knows Gao Zhan doesn't drink coffee, so he still doesn't understand why he was there that day. Shu finally opens up and reveals that she tricked Kong by bringing him there. She thought if Gao Zhan saw her meeting with another boy, then he would be jealous. Hearing this, Kong realizes that he's being used, and she has no romantic interest in him. Shu apologizes to him and swears that she wouldn't have done so if she had known that the person she was talking with online was actually him. On another day, Gao Zhan returns to the hospital and sees that Jing has fallen asleep and is casually snoring. He smiles and takes a video of her. He even puts a tissue under her drooling mouth, but then she unknowingly wipes it on his hand. Later, she wakes up and sees him reading in the chair next to her. She asks him if she snored, drooled, or talked in her sleep, but he denies all of this. Gao Zhan then says that he has something to tell her, and she thinks he's going to confess his love. However, instead he tells her that the broken eggs that she'd been trying to incubate on the farm were likely eaten by the dog he'd been watching. She's mortified to realize that that's why he's been visiting her. Gao Zhan then says that it's his fault that she has pneumonia. She walked out into the rain and sobbed her heart out, all because of his actions. Once back at home, Gao Zhan tries to study, but he keeps playing the video of Jing sleeping. He laughs at this footage and suddenly holds back. He then types a question in the search engine. If it is normal to think that his classmate is very cute when she's snoring, drooling, or talking in her sleep, yes is what pops up on the first page. He types another question, asking if it's normal to suddenly find his female classmate really cute. The answer then reads, perhaps that's a sign of you being in love. Poor Gao John isn't sure what to make of that answer. 
The following day, Jane gets discharged and is finally back at home. But then she discovers that her room has been redone, covered in pink Hello Kitty galore. Given her tomboyish style, she's not happy with the surprise from her parents. However, our girl has no choice but to say thank you. When she returns to school, she wants to reunite with Kong, but sees Shu wanting to talk to him first. Next up are the auditions for the Cultural and Art Festival. Sadly, the Taekwondo Club gets disqualified as they do not perform well enough during their audition. Even though the cheerleading group didn't have music in the middle of their set, they managed to get in. Jing is angry with Shu, who appears to be rubbing it in that they got a spot. Jing also gets angry at Kong for mocking her, as she knows he helped Shu with her rehearsals. To make it up to her, Kong manages to get the Taekwondo Club a chance to perform in the festival by adding the Taekwondo dance with Shu's cheerleading group. Next, the Taekwondo Club, including Jing and Gao Zhan, start their performance. At some point, the cheerleaders come out and Jing is supposed to do cartwheels from a certain mark, but she ends up colliding with Shu. The accident results in Shu going down with a foot injury. Enraged, she lashes out at Jing for being so careless. Our poor heroine doesn't say anything and is completely speechless. She isn't sure how this happened, as Gao Zhang had marked the place on the stage for her to jump at the right time. Thankfully, Shu's foot is fine as it's just a sprain, and nothing serious happened to the ligaments. In the meantime, Gao Zhang and Kong investigate what led to the accident. It turns out that someone moved the mark to ensure that Jing would somehow embarrass herself on stage. Shu's mean friend was the one who moved the mark apparently, for Shu's sake, but the plan didn't go as it was supposed to. Later, the friend apologizes to Jing, saying that she was doing it for Shu. This enrages our heroine even more, and she calls the girl an idiot. Next, Jing thanks Kong for his help in resolving the issue by giving him a customized phone case with her artwork. After this, Jing and Shu reconcile and put their differences aside. The latter also apologizes for blaming her without knowing the truth. One day in class, Gao Zhan finds Jing's observation book, aka the stalker notebook, on him. He then learns how much she likes him, so he walks her to their classroom later. However, Kong isn't too happy as he impatiently throws snacks at Jing's desk. A little while later, Teacher Chen asks Kong, Jing, and Da Peng to turn in their placement interest forms, such as arts and science. Kong wants to choose science, but he wants to stay in the arts with his best friend, Jing. Gao Zhan then asks Jing if she's free after school so they can do homework together. Kong answers for her that he'll take care of her. However, Gao Zhan says that they've both chosen art, so it's best if they study together. Jing isn't excited about this as she wonders if he did something wrong and wants to make it up to her again. After school, of course, Kong shows up at the same cafe as them. Meanwhile, Gao Zhan shows Jing the video of her snoring and gives her advice to get medical attention. Embarrassed, she tries to get him to erase the video, but to no avail. The following day, Gao Zhan visits her at home and wants to talk about her notebook, but she changes the subject every time. She tells him that the normal reaction is to have her locked up for being a stalker. In response, Gao Zhan says that she's quite cute, which almost makes her heroine choke on herself. He then apologizes for taking her notebook as curiosity got the better of him. He thinks she knows him better than he does and points out the details in the book. Later, Gao Zhan returns home and finds Da Pang's father there. His mother is at the supermarket, so the two have an awkward conversation while waiting for their mom to return for dinner. Gao Zhan asks how one knows when they're in love, as he's not sure if he finds a girl cute because she's interested in him, or if she's always been cute. Da Pong's father says that when other girls had crushes on him, he didn't like them. So this might mean that he has always found the girl cute, or perhaps he is in love with her. The next day is the last day before summer break starts. Everyone will be attending extra classes for the university during the holiday. To her surprise, Gao Zhan confesses to Jing in front of the entire school, asking if she wants to study with him in Beijing. But at the same time, she notices Kong walking away and then throwing away something in the trash. Curious, she picks out the letter and begins going through it. To her surprise, Kong has mentioned all the memories they made together and the time they spent playing and taunting each other. After school, Gao Zhan offers to walk Jing home, but she declines, saying that she has something to do. He simply replies that she can take her time to think about his proposal. In the next scene, Jing meets up with Kong, who immediately asks her if she's going to accept Gao Zhan's proposal and study with him in Beijing. Jing says that she doesn't know yet. In response, Kong suggests that she take interior designing like his father, as Jing is a good artist. For this, our heroine has to pass an exam and learn to draw in six months' time. She checks out the art program that her friend Jia Yao is already in, but the tuition is 10,000 won. So, she tells her parents that she has ambitions to be an interior designer. Jing needs to start a special art training program during the summer break, but her father is not happy about this. He wants her to apply to sports school for Taekwondo, especially as she's had years of training. Sadly, this is the first time her father hasn't supported her. But later, he changes his mind and gives mom the tuition money to give to her. Our humble heroine promises to work hard and repay them the money. However, Jing suffers during her art class as the instructor is very critical and even humiliates her, calling her drawings bad. 
In the meantime, Shu doesn't want to go to Ballet Dance Academy, but her mother insists on it. Cut to the next scene. Da Pong's father proposes to Gao Zhan's mom, and she happily accepts. So for the wedding, Da Pong and Gao Zhan decide to be the page boys, while Jing and Jia Yao agree to be the flower girls. Next, they go to try on their clothes for the big day. Both the boys are in awe of the girls in their flower girl finery. They then take a cute photo together. When it gets posted, Kong, who is taking an extra credit class, freaks out and shouts Flower Girl when he sees it on his phone. He pretends to have a stomach ache, so he leaves the class to call Jing. He demands to know why she's involved in this. He tells her that it's a waste of time and to focus on our class. Hearing his constant nagging, Jing gets angry and hangs up on him for wasting her time instead. Jing and the others then arrive at a karaoke place to practice singing for the big day. She tells Gao Zhang to sing from the diaphragm and places her hand on his stomach, which makes him a bit nervous. Unfortunately, his singing doesn't improve, prompting Jing to angrily take off. Meanwhile, Kong also arrives at the party. Later, the boys run into each other, and Kong lies about being there with his friends. In reality, he is here alone to look for Jing. Next, it's the wedding day. As the foursome sing their songs, Da Pong ends up holding Jia Yao's hand. When Gao Zhan offers to hold Jing's hand, Kong unexpectedly shows up and gets in between the two. He even continues holding onto Jing's hand himself. Gao Zhan and Jing both glare at Kong as he starts singing. Eventually, they remember where they are and continue their song. Afterward, Kong leaves and Jing follows him out, demanding to know what that was all about. He says he didn't mean anything by it. Right then, Gao Zhan arrives at the scene and calls Jing, saying she is needed for photographs. Kong just looks at Gao Zhan and then back at Jing, but doesn't say anything. It is evident that he is filled with jealousy. Meanwhile, Jing returns to the wedding with Gao Zhan. Cut to a few weeks later and it's their final year of high school. Xu and Kong are deskmates in a different classroom, apart from their friends as they decided to take a science major. In the meantime, Gao Zhan has requested for Jing to be his deskmate, so she's sitting right next to him. He claims it's to help her, to tutor her, but in reality, we know that he really likes her and wants to be close to her. Next up is the coming-of-age ceremony at school where the parents give gifts and blessings to their children. On the day of the ceremony, Jing is alone while everyone else is with their parents and accepting presents. She walks away realizing her parents didn't show up, and both Gao Zhan and Kong notice her departure. The boys meet outside, and Kong cunningly ties Gao Zhan's shoes and even throws his presents for Jing so he can beat him in reaching our heroine. Upon catching up with her, Kong gives her his present, a pencil sharpener. Then Gao Zhan shows up with his stack of books for her. She struggles to carry them, so the two guys start fighting over it. Jing quickly breaks it up and tries to leave in a huff, but is hampered by the books. Later, Jing's dad finally shows up, but she's furious at him. He tries to tell her that he had a little accident on the way, but she refuses to listen. She says everything is more important than her, before stomping away. Kong sees this and asks Jing's dad what happened. The latter honestly reveals the truth about the accident, which makes Kong sorry for him. Later, he talks to Jing about her father telling the truth. That day, when she returns home, she apologizes to her dad and accepts her gifts from her parents. The following day in class, Gao Zhan pulls out a deck of cards. We learn that Jing and Kong would regularly play this game, where if she pulled a queen or seven, it was a good sign. So, she pulls from Gao Zhan's deck and draws an ace, which makes her worried. For their mock test, Gao Zhan gets 145, the highest score, and she only gets around 80. To her surprise, teacher Zhang doesn't scold her, but tells her it's only a mock test. After class, Gao Zhan offers to tutor her again at her parents' tea shop. She offers to repay him with a lifetime supply of red bean matcha. Then, for the gift of his books, she gives him a 10 cent video VIP member card so he can watch his favorite show. Seeing her efforts, Gao Zhan smiles and says she's very cute. Our girl is shocked and quickly says that she got him the year's membership, which is the value of the books, and that she doesn't want to take advantage of him. After this, she excuses herself to use the bathroom, and he tries to go as well, but she makes him stay put. The following day, Gao Zhan prepares to get laser eye surgery so he can apply for the Public Security University, which means police work, like his late father. He then asks Jing if she'll apply for a school in Beijing. He tries to flirt with her, telling her that if something happens to his eyes, she can be his eyes. Our heroine asks him where he's learned these cheesy lines, and he awkwardly says, from Da Pong. The next day, Kong shows up in Jing's class and sits right next to her while she is sleeping. Outside the classroom, Gao Zhan is confused to see someone in his seat. Kong wakes her up and says that he has good news for her. At the same time, Gao Zhan interrupts to tell Kong that he's in his seat, but his vision is still impaired from his eye exam, so he doesn't realize it's Kong. Just then, Teacher Shen returns and announces that Kong is also joining the class. 
That night, Gao Zhan's mother finds his medical record in his bedroom and absolutely refuses to allow him to get eye surgery. She doesn't want him to join the police force, as the same decision cost his father's life. However, Gao Zhan is too determined to change his mind. The next day, Kong turns in his application to go to Nanshan University for an art program, instead of Fuxin University, where he wanted to pursue a science major. When asked why, he doesn't tell Miss Shen the actual reason. Meanwhile, Jing isn't happy about Kong's decision and presses him about the same. He finally admits that he chose Nanshan University for her, as the standard for the arts program for Fuxin is simply too high. She's pretty mad at him, as she didn't expect he'd think this way. Later that day, Xu's mother finds out about her street dancing. The girl defends herself and tells her mom that she wants to continue street dance. However, the latter becomes angry and threatens to cut herself if Xu doesn't listen to her. The following day, Jin continues to be mad at Kong. Her friends then find out that she rejected Gao Zhang. It turns out the other day, Gao Zhang and Jing had met at a cafe where he had confessed his feelings for her. When he returned the Gao observation book to her, she told him to keep it as it was her gift to him. It's a bit embarrassing and silly, but it was her most wonderful memory and she didn't regret writing about him. She told him that she no longer feels the same for him as she used to before. When asked why, Jing told him that perhaps it was when Kong came to their school as a transfer student and they started hanging out together. In class, to Jing's surprise, Gao Zhan isn't avoiding her and actually wants to remain friends. Seeing this, Kong becomes worried about their close friendship until one of the students tells him that he should be celebrating. She reveals that Jing actually rejected Gao Zhan the other day. Later, Kong tries to make it up to Jing but she's still quite mad at him. Regardless, he manages to give her a flash drive with study materials. He's also written a note to her, an apology. Since they haven't met for a few days, Kong contacts Jing's friends, Jia Yao and Xiao Bai, every day about her. Jing feels awkward about talking to him now, as their distance continues to grow. She continues avoiding him, but neither one wants to make the first move. They eventually make up on the last day of exams. Kong and Jing both apologize to each other for their actions, but they do argue about who was wrong in the first place. He then asks why she got Gao Zhan a coming-of-age present, but there wasn't one for him. In response, she says he'll have to wait a bit longer. The next day, Kong's dad tells him he's going overseas for a business trip. The dad has to hire someone to cook for him and clean the house while he's gone. However, it's sadly revealed that Kong's dad is going to the hospital waiting to get surgery, as he has stage 4 liver cancer. The doctor already mentioned that it will be a very critical operation. However, Dad doesn't want to inform his son about this, as he doesn't want to disturb Kong's last year of high school. In the meantime, Xu finds out that her mother's been ignoring calls from the entertainment management company for her street dancing. The greedy mom just wants her to go back to ballet. She further learns that the interview for the dance training in the company is on the same day as the college examination. So, she asks for help from her friends. Next, while Jing creates a diversion by distracting Xu's mother with a fake stomach pain, Xu secretly slips away to attend the interview. Jing and Xu's mom then arrive at the hospital, where the doctor confirms that Jing doesn't have any health problems. While trying to buy time, our heroine sees someone who looks like Kong's father being pushed in a wheelchair. She confronts him, and he sadly admits to having liver cancer. Jing asks him why he isn't telling Kong. In response, he says that he doesn't want to trouble his son during his final exam. In the meantime, Xu's mother learns that she has been tricked by the girls. In a fit of rage, she returns home and begins destroying the things around her. When Xu learns of this, she finally admits that she doesn't want to help her mother achieve her dreams anymore. Back at home, Jing is in trouble with her parents as well. When she tells her parents about Kong's father, they agree not to tell Kong. But she's worried that he won't forgive her later for lying to him. Next, the students start preparing for their final exams. Everybody's stressed out, so Da Pong sells the students some kind of chewing gum that will give them energy. Unfortunately, it turns out to be caffeinated gum, and it sends several students, including Jing, to the infirmary. One day, Kong sees his father's suitcase at home and discovers his mother inside the place. He finds out where his father's been and runs to see him in the hospital. As soon as he reaches and sees his dad's condition, he starts yelling and sobbing. He tearfully says that he should have been informed about all this. In the meantime, Gao Zhan needs to check his public security exam results, but he's kind of scared to. Seeing this, Jing does it for him. She happily informs him that he made it to the top spot. It's finally the exam day, and everybody is seated in their respective place to start the test. Just then, Kong receives a call. It turns out that his dad has barely made it through the surgery, but he's in very bad shape. He's in a coma. Kong rushes out of the exam hall to see his father at the hospital. After the test, Jing is worried about Kong and just runs out into the rain to see him. He's sitting on the bench in this heavy downpour. Jing then gives him an oat bar that his father had made, and Kong asks if it's the last thing from his dad. He then reveals that the cancer has spread all over his dad's body. 
Hearing this, Ashok Jing tries to soothe Kong, saying everything will be all right. The next day, Kong's mother lets it slip that Jing knew about his dad being sick long ago. Kong then confronts her and asks why she didn't tell him sooner. She admits that his dad asked her to keep it a secret from him and apologizes, but he doesn't want to talk to her. He says that he's lost two months without his dad because of her and angrily asks her if she can give him those two months back. Jing has a lot to say to him, but she knows he won't forgive her. As the days pass, Kong continues ignoring and avoiding Jing. His mother explains that she did it out of kindness and it was a great responsibility that her father asked of her. When Jing receives full marks for the first time ever on a math test, she sends him a message and finds out that he's blocked her. Sadly, Kong's dad passes away from the illness. When Jing learns about it, she goes to his home, but there is no one there, and he still has her blocked. She leaves a handwritten page filled with the words, I'm sorry, over and over for him on the bench outside his place. It turns out that Kong had packed up everything to move to England with his mother. He still has every gift from Jing, including the handwritten apology. He's packed these items separately from everything else. In the next scene, the students spot Kong and his mother walking by with their luggage. Jing runs out to go after him, but Kong doesn't want to speak to her. His mother insists that they talk, and she thanks her for her help. Jing then asks how long he will be angry with her. He finally says, with his back to her, that he's not angry with her. It's just that when he sees her, he's reminded of his father. After this, Kong walks away from her, and she tearfully reminds him that he wanted to go to Fusin University with her. He just continues walking away, with tears streaming down his face. Poor Jing can only cry as she watches him go. Later, a delivery arrives for Jing from Kong, his books, a deck of cards, and a letter. He admits that if he'd been in her shoes, he'd have done the same. So, he apologizes, but says he can't face her now. He then thanks her for being a part of his youth, being his best friend. Cut to a few weeks later, the results of the final exams are finally out. Jing struggles to check her results, so she imagines Kong being there for her. Right before she goes to click the button, Jing pulls out a deck of cards and looks inside. It's all queens and sevens only. It turns out that Kong had loaded the deck, so whenever she pulled from it, it would always give her luck and hope, as queens and sevens were her lucky cards. She sadly starts sobbing over the cards. It is also revealed that Jing's exam score was 483, so she's going to the college of her choice. It's the last day of school, and Kong suddenly returns. He approaches Jing and asks if she wants to be with him. She tries to reply, but just then, the bell rings and her words aren't audible. This is when Jing realizes that it was all a dream. When she wakes up, she discovers that her place has been ransacked and she's been robbed. She reports the burglary, and the missing items are her tablet, laptop, and most importantly, her bag. It's revealed that there's a time jump here. Jing has completed four years of university, and she is now working as an assistant designer and living on her own. Shortly after, Gao Zhan, who is now a prominent detective, shows up at her door for the investigation. In the meantime, Kong is back in town and planning the makeover of his dad's house. He's going to meet a designer for the project. Coincidentally, Kong is handling the project at the same company where Jing works. As a result, the two finally meet again after four long years. She's also been assigned to be the lead designer on this project. But when she sees Kong, she runs away and pinches herself, realizing it's not a dream this time. The following day, Kong approaches Jing and says that he knows she hasn't forgiven him. However, she replies that she doesn't hold past grudges. She then calls him Mr. Kong and explains that it's been four years and she has her own life now. Saying this, Jing walks away from there. Later that evening, Jing complains to her friends about Kong not contacting her for four years. Jia Yao encourages her to make the first move, because if no one does it, then they will be stuck here forever. Just then, Kong arrives at the place, and Jing's two friends leave them alone, hoping they will make up soon. Kong then sits down right next to her. Without looking, she loops an arm around his neck and says that they should keep drinking until they're drunk. Kong remains silent, so she asks to have more beer poured. He obliges by pouring some into her glass, and then some into his own glass. They clink glasses, and she takes a deep sip. She finally looks over at him, and realizes it's him. Kong tells her that he knows that she still cares about him. She just looks at him, then places her hand in between his hands. Kong continues to tell her that he's moving home for good. He asks for her to give him another chance, so they can start over. She yells no and jerks her hand out of his, which draws the attention of the other diners. Jing then asks if he's asking too much. He blocked her for four years and never tried to contact her again, and now he shows up and asks for them to start over. During the past four years, he hasn't been there when she's been sad or feeling down. He never sent a single text. Jing questions him if he's going to pretend like those four years never happened. Just when Kong is about to explain his side of the story, Jing abruptly passes out. As a result, he drops her off at home. He then sits down next to her and stares at her beautiful face. After this, Kong gets up and looks at her photos on the wall, the years he's missed. 
He then notices their high school senior group photo and sees that she stuck a cartoon sticker of him in place, as he had already moved to England when the group photo was taken. Meanwhile, Jing starts saying his name in her sleep and mutters that he's back. The next morning when she wakes up, Kong is already gone. He had made her breakfast, along with a note for her. The note says that he hopes she can reconsider working on his project and redesigning his dad's home. This is when Jing thinks back to the time when she was secretly visiting and taking care of Kong's dad. The two had talked about her dream of becoming a designer. He'd asked her for a favor, to design the perfect home for his son in the future. She had said only he can do this, however, she could be the assistant. To keep the promise, Jing shows up at Kong's home as a professional designer. She goes over the plans with him. When the meeting is over, he asks if she wants to know his answer to why he didn't contact her for four years. Jing angrily says that she didn't ask him. In response, Kong says that she did when she was drunk, but she fell asleep just when he was about to answer. Kong then finally brings up some guy she had taken a photo with in college, but he assumed that she'd been dating the guy. Jing tells him that the guy was the president of the Taekwondo club, and besides club activities, she never met him in private. Kong is surprised by this. She asks if this is why he never contacted her. Kong replies that he thought that she had moved on, so he was afraid to approach her. He also thought she'd forgotten about what had happened in high school. Jing then yells that she wishes she could have forgotten all the memories. Kong apologizes for misunderstanding her and admits that he had never gotten over what happened between them. He continues saying that he can't change the past, but what's important is the present. He asks what he should do now and what they should do. He waits for her answer, but they're suddenly interrupted by her ringing phone. Jing looks at her phone and says that she needs to go back to the office before turning around and leaving. Next, teacher Shen texts her former students asking him if they'd like to meet at the high school for a reunion. And so, the former students including Jing and her friends reunite at the school. Our girl notices that Kong is absent though. Jing and the former students learn that teacher Chen went on to become a famous writer and now her book is being adapted into a movie. It's also revealed that Chu, who is now an actress, is the main female lead in the movie. The movie is based on Jing and her friends and their high school days. Additionally, the final scene of the movie is being shot today at the school. It turns out that they're shooting the scene where Kong is leaving even though Jing wants to talk to him. But Shu is struggling to express the right emotions for the scene. So Jing tells her how she felt when Kong left that time. While she is demonstrating her emotions, Kong finally shows up and walks up to her. She talks about how important he was to her and how everything still reminds her of him. From directly behind, Kong apologizes to her and she looks at him and asks if he knows that she waited every day for him to text her. And she didn't know how long he'd hate her. But Kong says that he never hated her, he was only worried she wouldn't be bothered to talk to him. Jing asks if he's stupid as to why she would ever ignore him. She repeats the last part over and over emotionally before he finally hugs her. Kong apologizes again and says he won't run away from his problems anymore. He should have been honest and looked into her eyes and said what was on his mind. He then leans back, looks into her eyes, and says he likes her. Jing is the most fun, cutest, kindest, and bravest person he knows. He's never met anyone like her before and will never find anyone like her in the future. He likes her very, very, very much. Hearing all this, Jing smiles at him, equally in love and hopeful this time. Their friends and the actors cheer and chant for her to date him. In the last scene, Kong tells the director of the movie that there's something missing in the scene. The director laughs knowingly, but Jing doesn't know what it is. With a smile and a twinkle in his eye, Kong pulls her in for a kiss. Jing is startled at first, but she soon leans into the kiss. Our couple continues kissing as the series comes to a happy end.